Hello and welcome to this Raspberry Pi Xbox Media Center tutorial. During this tutorial I'm going to run through firstly what equipment you will need to get started, then the installation of XBMC from your computer to the Raspberry Pi, and lastly I'll go through the basic setup and talk a little bit about setting up Wi-Fi on your device. For this tutorial there's a few things you'll need. To start with you'll need your Raspberry Pi. Then, to connect to the internet for the initial installation, you will need a network cable. To connect to a HDTV or a monitor with a HDMI input, you will need a HDMI cable. For power, you will need a USB to micro USB lead. You can either get power from a USB port or you can get power directly from a wall socket by using one of these adapters. You will need a television or a monitor with a HDMI input. If you don't have one of those you can use a monitor with a DVI input and then use a DVI to HDMI adapter. If you don't have a device with a HDMI input you can always use a composite cable but remember if you're using a composite cable you will also need to use an audio cable to get audio from the Raspberry Pi to your television or your monitor. To complete the installation you'll need to use a USB keyboard and it's not essential but it's always handy to have a USB mouse hanging around. Also if you want to connect more than two devices to your Raspberry Pi you'll need a USB hub. To get the data onto your Raspberry Pi you'll need an SD card or in my case a micro SD card and an SD card adapter. There's also a couple of optional extras you can use. Firstly there's a Wi-Fi dongle which will allow you to connect wirelessly to your home network or to the internet. And if you want to control the device wirelessly, you'll need an Android or iOS device and the Xbox Media Center remote application. To download the distribution of XBMC for your Raspberry Pi, you need to go to raspmc.com click on download and then whichever op operating system you're using choose that link. So I'm using Windows at the minute so you just click here to download it downloads it straight away for you open it, run the installer and it will tell you that it's going to erase everything on your SD card or whatever you've got plugged into your machine. So that's the card that I want to install it on so I'll click install Click install. And now it's completely put on that SD card. I already had a version of RaspMC on that SD card, so what it's done, it's overwritten that. So, what you do now is plug your SD card into your Raspberry Pi and we'll boot it up and we'll go over to the television and record that. Once you've connected your Pi to the television and powered it up, you're greeted with this colourful splash screen. It then goes on to run the startup scripts and establishes a connection to the RaspMC server. It then gives you a bit of information about the website and developers, and after formatting the necessary partitions on your SD card, it starts to download the file systems. Don't worry, I've cut out or sped up these loading times. And that's it. The downloading is complete and it's starting to install. Installation takes about three to four minutes, then it downloads and installs the bootloaders and libraries. Reboots, then it realizes it's not the latest version, so it downloads the newest build, updates, and finally boots into XPMC. The first thing you'll find once the automatic installation is complete is that the screen size is slightly off. You can adjust this by using the keyboard's cursor keys to scroll along to system and then settings. 
Once here, scroll down to System again, hit Enter and select Video Calibration. Now by using the cursor keys, you can fine tune the image shown on screen by moving the bars in the top left and then on the bottom right so they're just showing. Then if you want you can adjust where the subtitles will show and finally adjust the square so it's perfectly square. Hit escape to exit and you're taken back to the previous menu ready for the next step. While we still have the network cable plugged in it's a good idea to download the network manager. This is needed to configure a Wi-Fi adapter for the device. From the home screen scroll to programs and then hit enter straight when it's selected on the word programs. Then select get more. After a couple of seconds it will load up the list of programs and add-ons available. There will be a few there but it's network manager that we're interested in. Select it and click install and then just wait a second for it to download. Once it's added you can access it from the programs menu. So as you can see it says that no Wi-Fi device is found. That's just because I haven't plugged it in yet. Now when it comes to buying a Wi-Fi adapter for your Raspberry Pi, it's not just as simple as picking a penny from the shelf. There are specific ones that work with the Raspberry Pi. So I did a bit of research on this website here, which I'll leave a link to in the description. If you go to section 8.1, working USB Wi-Fi adapters, you find a big old list of Wi-Fi adapters that work with the Raspberry Pi. Now I bought mine from 7 Day Shop and it cost me about £5.99. But unfortunately, when you click on these links to them, they're not there anymore. You may be able to search for the product on the shop itself, but as I've already got mine, I don't need to do that anymore. But you can have a look through the list, find one which is suitable for you, price range, speed, and if you find one that's good, go ahead and buy it. So now I have the Wi-Fi dongle plugged in, I can use Network Manager to set it up. Once you're in the program, you should see that it no longer says no device found. Click Add and you'll be presented with a list of wireless networks in range. Mine is the top one. Click Enter on that and enter your encryption key. Having the mouse on standby to navigate through these menus is pretty handy. Once you've added it, you can click Status to check that it's connected. Now you're connected to your home network and as long as your router is plugged into your phone line you'll be connected to the internet and you can access everything you could have when it was hardwired. Now I'm quickly just going to go through how to add files to XBMC. Remember we're not actually copying the files onto the SD card but rather just telling XBMC where to find the files. This will be different for everyone because you might have your media run the SD card itself or on a USB drive or on a portable hard drive. I've got mine on a Synology server connected to my home network so to add the media I have to navigate to the server on my network. To do that I type in the name of the server and then the shared folder on that server I want to add. Type my username and password now that shared folder then appears in the browse menu. I can then go in and browse that folder and select any subfolder within to add to my media library. I could have also selected the root of that shared folder to add it and all of the contents in that folder would have been added to the library at once. I choose a name for the folder, exit back to the video files menu and that folder I added is there. I can then browse that folder's contents again, select a video file, wait a second for it to buffer, and that's it. The video is playing. Hopefully this tutorial has helped you turn your Raspberry Pi into a media center. Join me in part two, where I'll go through how you can control XBMC and browse the library wirelessly with an Android device.